Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the contest problem from weekly contest 336. The problem's name is minimum time to complete all tasks. The problem states that there is a computer that can run an unlimited number of tasks at the same time. You are given a 2D integer array task where the ta uh, where each of those entries re uh, represent the start time of the task, the end time of the task, and the duration it has to run in. So this is this indicates that the I ith task should run for a total duration of duration i seconds not necessarily continuous so it could be the case that it runs for a second and then it doesn't runs for some time and then it again runs for a unit of time cool so it has to uh, within this inclusive range so let's say uh, we have to run this task for example 152 so we can say that okay uh, it has to run in the inclusive range of uh, 1 and 5 so we can run it at, uh, once at second 1 or the, at the first second or the second second and then we might want to run it at let's say third second or fourth second so any of those operations is possible right at the end we have to tell them for how long the computer was turned on right so return the minimum time during the uh, which the computer should be turned on to complete all the tasks so the optimal approach would be that we'll turn on the computer we'll run a few tasks so it can run a limited number of tasks at the same time so we would like to run a few tasks on it and as soon as it gets idle we'll close it right we'll shut it down so that uh, our uh, on time or the time at which the computer was turned on is minimized so that is our primary goal to do but the thing is how can we do this how can we minimize it so let's uh, look at some intuitions or some tricks over here so the first thing is that since I want to run every task so it's not a choice that I can ignore some tasks right since I want to run every task so technically let's say this is a task A right which has some start time and then it also has some has some end time right that technically means that i'll ha definitely have so i can start at any time right so let's say i started at any time or i didn't even start but even in the worst case i'll definitely have to complete it before the end time right so if its duration was d right i'll have to utilize this time slot at least if it hasn't run in this particular time right so the last time at which I can run this task is this particular time itself, right? Now, why is this beneficial for me? What I can say is that every task I can sort based on their end indexes, right? So I'll say that this is the task A. I'll just sort the task based on the end indices. So let's say after sorting it, I get a sequence A, B, and C. So that would mean the end time of A, let's denote it by E, right? So E of A would be less than E of B would be less than e of c why is this helpful what i can say now is that for e of a i'll always uh, use this uh, or i'll always uh, try to complete this task at the end time so i'll say i'll uh, so let's say this is the start time of a this is the end time of a right and this is the duration of a this right over here is the duration of a so i'll say that i'll complete this task at the very end time because I know that the next task has an end time that is greater than this, right? So the next task would be having end time that would either end over here or would end over here, but it cannot end before it. So for a start, uh, for ending of B, it has to be greater than or equal to ending of A. Ending of B is greater than or equal to ending of A. Over here also, let's just change the signs. Yeah, cool. So ending of, ending of B is greater than or equal to ending of A. So I'll, I'm almost sure that in, in in the worst case also i'll be able to utilize this time right this time would always be able to, uh, i'll always be able to utilize this time although there could be a scenario wherein the starting time actually partitions it so it could be the case that this was s of a right and my s of b is somewhere let's say around here right so even in that case i'll be able to utilize some portion a portion of a right for this task but this greedy approach will always work because had I used some other portion of A, right? So this wouldn't have been utilized by the other tasks that are going to come ahead of it because I've already sorted them in the... Uh, I've already sorted them by their end, end, uh, end time, right? So the most optimal way of uh, for doing a task would be that arrange them in the... Uh, arrange them by end indices or by end time and then try to complete it at the last time possible. Now let's check for some edge cases. Now it's possible that you ran this task, right? And you said, okay, I'll complete it over here. Then there came another task, right? Which you had to complete 
uh, like this was already being used so he said okay I, i'll utilize that and then i'll also have to like let's say uh, its duration was 5 seconds this was uh, maybe 7 seconds this duration is only 4 seconds so this task is already done that it is a for task b 1 second is remaining so for task b you'll say okay okay i'm going to use 1 second of from this right and then so on so forth so this trend would continue now how do you uh, code it so let's see the code also so what i'll use uh, say is that firstly i'm going to sort it now this is the basic stuff I'm not going to explain it in detail uh, if you are doing a hard problem i am assuming that you already know how to uh, use a comparator in order uh, in order to sort if you don't you can google it up but the basic scenario is that i want to tell my uh, algorithm that how do you want to sort it so i'll say that if my end indices are not same then sort it based on the end indices else sort them based on the start indices then i'm go going to use a, um, an ordered map or a hash map and it would contain that at what time slot so the first in, uh, parameter over here is the time slice right it's whether it's used or not used or not uh given the constraint i could have used a, a vector over here as well but i try uh, i used a map you can use whatever you want well then i'm going to say the count so count is basically the number of time slices for which the computer was on then i'll say that for the entire time slice of this uh, of this task that would range from the start time to the end time if for the previous tasks i have already set this particular uh, a particular time slice from this uh, from this task so by that i mean that if i am already utilizing the computer within this particular range then for that particular time i can say that okay i'm going to run this task also so i can say that greedily so i'll say if if in this particular time there's any time slice wherein my computer is on so i'll decrease the uh, duration of my task right that is uh, something i can do and i'm going to say that if it's already less than or equal to 0 good enough continue or if you don't want to do that you can remove it altogether still it would be fine then you'll say that i want uh, now i want uh, this still some duration left for my task to complete so i want you to uh, give me some time to complete my task so i'll say that i want to complete it at the end in is possible so this is the end time this right over here is the end time so from end time i'll uh, go towards the start time the only condition would be that uh, there should be some duration still left for my task to complete right then i'll say that if this index has not already been used only in that scenario i can use that index right so if that's the case then i want to decrease the duration of my duration of the process or task now decreasing the duration of a task is act, uh, exactly similar to saying that okay i'm actually using the computer at the same time you can use anything you can actually utilize a variable and then uh, you can say that okay this is the end uh, use time you can say this is equal to task or the duration and then you can over here say that use time is okay so use time is less than task 2 and then you can say that okay i'm going to increase my use time right so anything would do but i tried using this approach anything would work actually over here okay so okay give me a second uh, let me see okay while use time is less than task 2 then i'm going to increase my uh, okay uh county used of t okay that makes sense okay anyway uh, let me uh, explain you the logic so the logic is if the current used uh if uh, uh, like the current time slice has not been already utilized so this time slice is already is available because i have not all utilized it already right then i'll say that i'll ca i can use this particular time that's obvious right if i can use this particular time okay okay got it so it has to be zero over here let hmm, mistake over there yeah okay so over here you can see the answer is fine so you can use anything uh, anything as you want so i'll say till the time my use time is less than the duration it requires i'll keep incrementing it and for each of the time slices i'll say that okay i'm going to use this time slice use this time slice right and uh time for which my computer is on would increase right so that's what i'm doing at then just return the time for which your computer was on 
a pretty basic question just the only thing is that you should know that uh, how greedy approaches work and if you know that this question shouldn't have been tough for you but sometimes it happens that things don't click if that was a scenario no worries you'll be able to do it next time cool guys thanks a lot for watching this video bye bye